we are at the 65th uh, annual convention of Siam and we have Mr. Jalaj Gupta who is the MD of uh, Montra Electric. Montra Electric is very much known for producing uh, electric three-wheelers, e-tractors, e-SCVs and e-HCVs. Um, thank you for talking to us, sir. Thank you. I want to know uh, what is your approach going forward when it comes to electric everything, uh, uh, which is not very mainstream but very much important for the industry, um, consumers and customers. What is your uh, plan going forward with this? Yeah, so firstly, thanks for having me. Uh, now, you know, I'm just picking up on the question. Uh, electric may not be mainstream for the industry, but for us, this is the only stream. So we are fully invested in only electric. Right. So as far as the other OEs is co are concerned, you know, electric is one of the uh, one of the other fuels that they are experimenting with. Yeah. But as far as Montreal Electric is concerned, we are fully committed and all in. We have no other right. alternate fuel. And for us, this is the lifeline. Exactly. So we are fully committed for the electric. That is number one. And coming specific to the question that you asked for. So there is a lot that's happening. As you rightly said that, you know, we are present in the four segments. And we, the first positive is that in all the four segments, the products that we have got, they are all on the road. Hmm. So there is no, uh, pro there is no division whose product is in so-called project stage. Every product is on the road. Every product is there to be sold to the customer. So that's the first thing that we are uh, seeing. Second thing we are seeing is that in every segment, in all the four segments, there are huge uh, upside which is available. Because when, when we are talking electric at this point of time, it's not about, you know, the growth rate of that particular segment. It's about the entire ICE market hmm. is available out there to be converted, right? I'm not saying the entire ICE market will, yeah. will get converted, yeah. but that's the kind of opportunity that's Long available. Yeah. Which so, so I see, uh, you know, the future of electric in other segments that we are present in and some of the ones that we are going to be present in as very very bright and prosperous right and but there are also so many uh, competitors in the same field so how do you deal with such a competition in such a mass market that i want to know so uh, you know uh, you are right india is leading the way when it comes to electric three wheeler hmm. uh, be it in the passenger car uh, passenger uh, auto or be it in the e-rickshaw category. Hmm. In fact, if you uh, if you were to look at the data, in times to come, uh, once government slightly regulates the safety uh, norms and more, uh, you know, regulation around the passenger safety, the e-rickshaw market hmm. will see even more organized players coming in. Right. right now, there are a lot, lot many unorganized players which are there in the market. Yeah. The one sub-segment in electric three-wheeler is the electric three-wheeler cargo. That mm. kind of has stagnated. Uh, that's not showing the kind of growth that it should be showing. showing. But in the, in the other part of dealing with the competition, so competition is in e everywhere. I can give you the example of the big trucks. In the big truck segment whereby, you know, pe the truck segment is just taking off. At this point of time, the way we speak, there are seven players in the market. And the market is not even, uh, not even uh, uh, less than 100 vehicle a month. Mm. So, less than 100 uh, truck a month and there are already 7 players in the market. So, competition is going to be the name of the game. Uh, I think uh, when it comes to competition, everybody knows that electric is going to be there as far as the going forward is concerned. It's just a question of when the people, they want to take a plunge and they want to take a plunge into which segment. Mm. So, competition is here to stay, which for the end consumer, it's always very good, right? right? Because when the competition is there, the consumer gets better technology, uh, competitive price, hmm. better services, right? And it's the sh sign of maturing of the market. So we welcome competition. It's good for the end consumer and good for us as well. Right. And uh, one question uh, is that uh, when the uh, other companies are thinking of hydrogen commercial vehicles, um, you have brought in e-SCVs and e-heavy commercial vehicles. Mm -hmm. What is the idea behind it? Because the battery is too large for a commercial vehicle. 
uh, uh, what 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 is it uh, that you want to say on that so the way we have looked at is that for the end consumer hmm. the customer who is going to use the vehicle uh, does the proposition that we are uh, taking to the consumer does it make sense or not hmm. right and then a consumer does not really look that whether it is diesel or it is electric or it is petrol or it is cng we have to ensure that the end consumer operations are carried on irrespective the truck or the logistics um, uh, of the business has to be the enabler and it cannot be the hindrance in the main business of the end consumer hmm. right and if in the entire process we can bring down the logistics cost of the end consumer and we can improve the efficiency right so it really does not matter you know which fuel are you going with okay with regards to electric we are convinced that there are certain segments which are or end use application which are very clearly emerging where electric is making complete business sense hmm. and the consumer also has understood it and gradually but surely the consumer is migrating into electric uh, when it comes to hydrogen it's about taking a taking a call or taking you know our assessment of the market our assessment of the market was that perhaps at this point of time mm-hmm. and in next let's say next 3 to 5 years or so maybe slightly premature for hydrogen right mm. at this point of time perhaps electric you know will see a faster adoption right, right? which is turning out the case to be right yeah. that's where we are right and uh, lastly one of my uh, favorite segments which is electric tractors and uh, it won't be wrong to say that uh, montra is the pioneer in electric tractors how is the business going on with with that uh, in that space and uh, i just want you to uh, talk more elaborately elaborately uh, on uh, agriculture tractors and industrial use of tractors so there is a whole debate around uh, our agriculture tractors more in demand or industrial so and it's in nascent stage and uh, uh, though there the three wheelers and commercial vehicles uh, have been covered in subsidies but electric tractors we don't see it what is your uh, take on that yeah so you know uh, tractor india is the largest tractor market in the yeah. in the in the world right uh, primarily diesel so mm. that's that's the fact number 1 uh fact number 2 again is that you know if you look at a electric tractor versus a diesel tractor what is it that electric tractor brings to the table and what's the negative of electric tractor vis-a-vis a diesel tractor hmm. the obvious negative is that it's almost double the price of that of a uh, diesel, tractor, diesel tractor right yeah. that's the negative what's the positive the positive is it comes at a hugely reduced operating cost yeah. as compared to a diesel tractor right hmm. that's a big positive now add to it one more dimension is that the ease of arranging uh, money or financing right 99.9% of the tractors in the country diesel tractor which are sold they are sold financed by the farmer right and mm. a farmers and they are usually are the not the ones you know who would be very very affluent in terms of buying a tractor right mm. this is where you are and that's where a tractor electric tractor has a fish to the water kind of a uh, you know liking when it comes to industrial usage because of two reasons a the when it comes to industrial usage the ability of the industry or the you know to get a good financing term yeah. as compared to a retail customer is much much higher so yeah. the cost of borrowing is much better when it comes to a big industrial house as compared to a retail individual farmer that's the first point yeah. but the second and the biggest point is the operating cost mm. for the industry in a long term will work out much much cheaper as compared to a individual farmer mm. right third thing the tractor in case of a industrial usage will play in a known and a confined closed loop when it mm. comes to a geography right mm. so it's a controlled environment mm. a b it comes at a lower cost of borrowing c it gives you a very good operational cost yeah. and d when it comes to electricity and the availability of electricity in terms of three phase connection and a constant charging infrastructure and all that yeah. it can very be easily set up in the plant inside mm. as compared to let's say setting it up 
in a village or a for one or a farm for one tractor or two tractor it will always be a challenge so i'll say it will be most logical would be specific applications like compressed biogas vineyards airport cargo movement right yeah. so those are the very logical uh, applications for electric tractor and when it comes to retail uh, farmers i think it's going to take some time hmm. and that's my larger point you know for electric uh, commercial vehicle is that will electric uh, vehicles completely replace ice answer is no right but will there be applications where by electric will make a lot of sense from consumer point of view answer is absolutely yes hmm. and to that extent the electric vehicles will see the easy penetration into the respective commercial segments right so we can say that for now till electric tractors gain traction in the rural areas we can say that it's now more of an industrial uh, vehicle to start with to start, to start with. with although we have seen in 4 to 5 um, um, uh, about 10 or tractors in the retail cases mm -hmm. but those are more of affluent farmers yeah right. uh, who are into hobby farming mm. and those kind of a things right mm. but when it comes to the normal run of the mill uh, hardcore agricultural usage also for a normal operation or so i think from a profile of the customer and other complexities it's going to take some time right do you think that there is a lack of awareness when it comes to uh, e tractors yes 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 possibly yes possibly mm. yes because uh, uh again uh, you know as you said we are the first ones who started it mm. and at this point of time also we are also going not pan india we are selecting the applications we are selecting the geographies and we are selecting you know uh, the specific uh, applications where we will be seeding in our vehicle mm. so we are not going uh, pan india whole out because that that's not going to work especially with electric vehicle it's not going to work right and when it comes to exports of all the e vehicles that the portfolio that montra carries how uh, how is how are the exports uh? so for uh, for so we are looking at exports so mm. for example for our three wheeler we are looking at four five countries yeah so we are looking at uh, sark region and we are looking at somewhere in africa as well mm. so this is where we are looking at right. and uh, we are going to piggy back on that when it comes to our other uh, vehicles are concerned although the challenge of having a left hand drive always remains when it comes to trucks or so but but if your question is exports are you looking at answer is absolutely yes hmm. we are looking at maybe in some point of time gradually we'll start our and expand our export uh, operations even more right and when you see uh, the electric market india and globally how do you see the how do you compare it where india stands in the global arena see globally also uh, i will say it should not be india versus the globe it should is be china and the rest of the world okay china yeah? plus one yeah yeah it's and 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 that's where it is in terms of the development in terms of the maturity and all china is uh, miles ahead of hmm. the rest of the entire world when it comes to electric commercial vehicles right? commercial vehicles yeah so hmm. china and we have a lots to catch up uh, with uh, when it comes to vis-a-vis -vis china Hmm. when it comes to other developing or developed countries or so i think wherever they are we are more or less there i mean there is not too much differentiating us with the rest of the countries yeah. but i think china is the one who's clearly taken a lead is more mature market beat any category of electric vehicles right also can you uh, could you please give us uh, insights on all the markets tier one tier two tier three where do you see the most demand for electric uh, vehicles uh, for instance um, i just talked to a farmer and uh, he said that electric tractors can become a thing because we are buying electric two wheelers as well so maybe they are aware um, so if you can you know bifurcate between rural and urban demand when it comes to electric vehicle uh, according to your uh, uh, decades of experience so uh, so uh, i'll try and answer it's a good question i'll try and answer uh the way we see it is uh, and i'll i'll answer and this question is specifically for tractors or is it for all the four all segments? the four segments yeah so uh, when it comes to my understanding is uh, when it comes to trucks hmm. big trucks and electric tractors at least for immediate future primarily the business will be b2b it will not be b2c hmm okay and when it comes to b2b so 
irrespective of where the vehicle is flying even if the vehicle is flying in a in a small tier 3 town or in a village in a plant or so but the end buyer of the vehicle is a b2b uh, buyer right now when it comes to the uh, small commercial vehicle which is the eviator model that we have got i will say even there also six, 70 to 80% of the purchase will be b2b so in fact if i may to correct myself not two but three out of the four businesses we see primarily two of them 100% b2b Hmm. All almost 90% plus and third one about 80% plus B2B. Yes. Out of the three businesses, two businesses are, I will say, almost 100% B2B. Uh, the business of uh, small commercial vehicle, I will say about 80% B2B. The balance 20%, which is the retail customers, they are also one one uh, driver come owner at this point of time or at least in the next two, three years. Hmm. Will he buy an electric small commercial vehicle? I don't think so. Right? Who will buy? Suppose, uh, suppose I am a captive user, mm -hmm. I have a cement distributorship and I have my own 4-5 vehicles who are dedicatedly assigned you know, for my uh, business only. Will I buy? I will absolutely buy because it makes absolute sense. Mm -hmm. So that will be the kind of a, uh, those 20% of the rest of the customer. When it comes to the three-wheeler, mm -hmm. right? Three-wheeler is where what your question that actually comes into picture mm -hmm. which is the urban rural mm -hmm. tier 1, tier 2, tier 3. So, interestingly, over there, if you see UP, yeah. UP primarily, barring Kanpur and Lucknow, UP is today India's largest three-wheeler passenger uh, market, right? And Lucknow and Kanpur, even if you keep them aside, which are the two big urban cities, even the rest of the entire state, yeah. right? Electric three-wheeler is the in thing, right? So, I think electric three-wheeler for the passenger application and the e-rickshaw, this is the one which has almost penetrated to the tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 level. But when it still comes to tier 3 and the uh, uh, rural areas, on account of the charging infrastructure availability, etc. and all that, I think that could be the only stumbling block. But when it comes to the end use customer viability, I don't think so. There is any doubt that electric three-wheeler and CNG. This could be one category which can see... Okay. Uh, ice going out completely okay. and completely been taken over by right. CNG as well as the electric uh, three wheel. Got it, got it. Uh, uh, we have to end our con conversation though it's very interesting. Uh, we touched on everything electric. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for uh, joining us. Thank you thank for you. having me. Thanks.